Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone this morning, especially welcome any visitors who may be with us, either in person or online. Uh, it's great to have you all on this 25th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, next Sunday, we celebrate Christ the King. And then the week after that is Advent. So uh, the year, church year, is quickly coming to an end, and as well as a new beginning. And uh, we are looking forward to those things. So um, today we do have the table, uh, our alternative worship service, the less formal service down in Fellowship Hall. Uh, that is at 945, and you're quite welcome to join us for that if you would like. A very important announcement, and uh, I want you to please hear this, please spread the word on this. You should have gotten an announcement about this. Uh, if you haven't, um, again, please pay attention and spread the word. The congregational meeting of St. Mark's Church will be held November 21st in the nave, right here where we sit. One service, 10 o'clock, with the meeting to follow immediately, which means the meeting will start around 11 to 11.15. We're asking you to wear masks for the meeting because we're expecting... Uh, a good attendance, and we're expecting some conversation to go on, so we are uh, asking that you wear masks for the meeting. Um, we will be adopting, hopefully, a budget for 2022, um, and if you need a copy of that budget, you can call the church office. I believe there are still a few available in the hall here. Uh, we can see that you get a copy of that proposed budget, if you would like. Um, we'll be electing council members and a few other elected positions, as nursery school board and those sorts of things. Um, and again, uh, we ask that you please spread the word on this, let folks know. Again, this is a very important day in the life of the church. So that's next Sunday, the 21st, one service, 10 o'clock, congregational meeting immediately following. And uh, we're asking, we're going to do something different uh, for 2022 as far as stewardship is concerned, uh, something we haven't done for quite a while. Um, we are going to ask you to make a commitment to your stewardship for 2022. Uh, we will be distributing commitment cards, and you can uh, commit to a certain amount that you would like to give uh, to the church, uh, either weekly, monthly, however you would like to designate that. Uh, we will collect those on November. We'll pass the cards out next week. Uh, and again, we'll find ways to distribute them to folks who are not here. We'll collect those on the first Sunday of Advent, which being the first Sunday of the church year will be a way of us making a New Year's resolution uh, to support our stewardship for the coming year. Um, those cards will be placed in an envelope. Uh, our financial secretary would be the only one privy to that information. She already knows how much you give. Uh, she's praying for us all. Uh, but she's the only one that might be privy to that information. We will put those cards in an envelope. Each Sunday, they'll be brought forward with the offering. So you will be reminded that your commitment is in that offering plate. Um, if you're unable to meet that commitment, or if your circumstances change, that's understandable. But again, we are asking for a commitment to stewardship. Uh, and if you'd like, we can even arrange for the financial secretary to notify you, say, quarterly to let you know where you stand as far as commitment. Uh, you'll have an option on your commitment card to do that. Did I hear? I heard something from our financial secretary that. See, I hadn't told her any of this yet, so. Okay. I haven't told her any of this yet, but I'm sure she'll, she'll agree, so. I don't think you'll be overwhelmed with requests for reminders, Mary, but again, we are asking people to make that commitment. And then finally, on a lighter note, today is the last chance to order butter braids uh, from our nursery school or fellowship ministry. They will be uh, splitting the cost and uh, if you'd like to order those following this service, you can see Lorraine Mariner uh, or call the church office during the week and we'll see that you get your butter braids. Are there any other announcements we should be aware of this morning? Let us prepare for worship.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. Have mercy on us, O God. We confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbor. We have built walls instead of tables and have turned away the stranger. We have sought glory for ourselves and have treasured that which does not satisfy. Help us to love as you love, to welcome as you, and to treasure mercy and justice. Turn us from your ways to your ways, and free us to serve those in need. Amen. God, who makes all things new, forgives your sins for Jesus' sake, and remembers them no more. Lift up your heads and your hearts. Yours is the kingdom of God. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, your sovereign purpose brings salvation to birth. Give us faith to be steadfast amid the tumults of this world, trusting that your kingdom comes and your will is done through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. first lesson is from the book of Daniel. At that time, Michael, the great prince, the prosecutor of your people, shall arise. There shall be a time of anguish, such as has never occurred since nations first came into existence. But at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Please join me in reading Psalm 16 responsibly. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other that are in the land upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. I will not pour out drink offerings to such gods, never take their names upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because God is my right hand, I shall not be shaken. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Our second lesson is from Hebrews. 
Every priest stands day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, and since then has been waiting until his enemies would be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected all time those who are sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also testifies to us, for after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of those, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. The word of the Lord. I invite you to stand as you're able. Hallelujah. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to stand before the Son of Man. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be? And what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Time for our children's sermon. We got some children in church here this morning, uh, young and old alike. Uh, if you have folks, that are children at home you'd like to gather around, uh, now's the time to do it. So we have a story this morning that is called simply, Be Ready. Hmm, seems like a good idea, right? Be ready. But be ready for what? Hmm, let's see. Jesus was walking in Jerusalem with his disciples when one of them pointed to a tower of heavy stones being used to build a temple. Look, the disciples said, what huge stones and what large buildings. Jesus stopped and said, you see these big towers of stone? Someday all these stones will fall down. Not one of them will remain standing. Peter and the other disciples were confused. The temple wasn't even finished yet. What would make it fall down? They began to worry. When will this happen? Peter asked Jesus. Jesus paused and smiled kindly at his friends. Don't be afraid, Jesus said. Watch and wait. Be ready. Even when scary things happen, God is working for good. God told them this to comfort them, 
or Jesus told them this to comfort them because he knew trouble was coming. Jesus would soon go to the cross. Hmm. So these guys were so impressed with this big stones and the things they were using to build that building. I think we have a pretty nice church here, don't you think? Right? Yeah, we have a pretty nice building. We have, especially now that we got the stained glass windows, that really makes it look nice and it's comfortable and it's warm and in the summertime it's air conditioned, right? But you know, when I ride around, I see some churches that are not nearly as nice as ours, they're smaller. They're not in really good shape, but they're still churches. And then I see other churches that are much bigger than ours, right? Much very ornate. They're, they have beautiful stones and giant stained glass windows and steeples and towers and all that. And one time, it's been a good while ago, but I went to Haiti with my daughter, and their church over there was just kind of underneath a big shade tree out in the, in the, in the field. And people would come and they'd gather around and they'd be under that big shade tree and a lot of them didn't even have chairs to sit on, but that's where they had church and they would sometimes stay for a couple hours, like a lot longer than we do. So when God looks down here and he sees all these different churches, do you think he loves us more because we have a nicer church than somebody else? I don't think so. Do you think he loves those people with those big fancy churches more than he loves us because their churches are fancier and more ornate than ours? Boy, I sure hope not, right? And what about those people that meet out under the shade trees out in the field or some people just have a, a little tarp that they meet under for church? How do you think God feels about them? Hmm. I think God probably loves them just as much as he loves us, right? So Jesus told these guys, you know, it's no big deal what your church is like. It's the people in the church, and it's what's in the hearts of the people in the church that really matters. And Jesus says, you know, someday all this stuff is going to be gone. But when we have God in our heart, when we love Jesus, when we believe how much Jesus loves us, we're going to be okay. So he says, you know, yeah, nice buildings are okay. It's good. Honor God with nice things. What's really important is who are in those buildings, what's in our hearts when we're in these buildings, believing in Jesus so that even if this all goes away tomorrow, we'll be okay because God loves us. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you give us this gift of love shown to us in Jesus we thank you that that gift of love lets us know that it that really doesn't matter where we worship, but that we do worship, that you love us and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you very much. Grace to you and peace this morning from God the Father and the Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Tell us, when will this be and what will be the sign that it is about to take place? Well, hundreds of the wisest prophets in history have said the second coming of Jesus will take place before the year 2000, and even narrowed it down to a specific date, September 30th, 1998. Well, apparently that didn't happen. Um, let's see. Four different men will claim to be Jesus, and each will demonstrate amazing powers, including mind reading and the ability to vanish and reappear at will. Christ will briefly materialize in Mississippi with hundreds of thousands of fighting angels at his side to signal the beginning of a holy plague that will sweep the planet wiping out millions of non-believers. Uh, after their brief appearance in Mississippi, Christ and his band of soldier angels will reappear in Alabama to establish a base from which to begin the construction of heaven on earth. God joins Christ and the angels in Alabama, revealing his mind and purpose to every saved soul 
gifting them with divine wisdom and immortality as their reward for lives well lived. Uh, that was from 2002. I'm guessing that didn't happen. Um, 2003, Pope John Paul II moves into a bomb shelter to prepare for Armageddon. And so should you. And we have a picture here of Pope John Paul will lead a hundred of his associates into his underground bomb shelter. They plan to stay for only 60 days. So apparently they aren't one of those millennialists who, millennialists who think there'll be a thousand years of tribulation. But then there's one that gives us a bit of hope. Jesus will not return to earth for another 1,000 years. And this is from 2001. Contrary to the teachings of many fire evangelical preachers, the second coming is not around the corner. Rather, the Messiah will come back 3,000 years after his resurrection, after mankind has built cities among the stars, according to the prophecies. And another one that gives us hope, the world is not coming to an end. Contrary to popular belief, history isn't grinding to a halt. The lost prophecies state that six signs will herald the end of the world, and none of them are likely to occur in the near future. The six include the destruction of man's largest city on Mars, and other events that experts say won't be possible for hundreds of years. So, all those answers to Jesus' question to his disciples come from that highly respected theological journal, the Weekly World News, which unfortunately has ceased publication for a number of years now. But when it was being published, they worked under the, uh, the following guidelines. Um, Truth to us has a capital T. It is the beating heart of our world. Facts can be interpreted, distorted, selective, but truth is absolute. The question readers should be asking is whether the so-called mainstream press understands and respects the truth. Sadly, the reporting that takes place beyond our pages is not as pure as the public deserves. Like everything else we print, that is the truth. So, I mean, even though the, the Weekly World News publishes only the truth, apparently they got a little misguided at a couple spots along the way. So it seems that those questions that Peter, James, and John, and Andrew asked Jesus in private have been in people's minds for a long time. It's human nature to want to know when something will come to an end. Things like a football game, a 1,500-meter race, or the last Sears store in our area. We want to know the end so we can be prepared by putting out one last extra effort or by getting the best possible deal on a new appliance. Or, perhaps most importantly, getting things right with God before it's too late. There may be no better example of this, the eschaton, otherwise known as the end times, judgment day, or the second coming. When his closest disciples asked Jesus about it, symbolized by the destruction of the temple, Jesus, true to character, didn't give them a simple answer. Instead, he warned them about being led astray by false prophets and self-proclaimed messiahs. He then offered a list of events that seemed ripped from the headlines, as we hear on TV, events that have been occurring since that day and long before that day. Just as we're about to imitate Pope John Paul II and head for our bomb shelter, Jesus says, do not be alarmed, the end is still to come. It reminds me of the story of Chicken Little, which tells the story of a little hen who panicked when she thought the sky was falling. Near the end of the story, we hear Henny Penny, Rooster Booster, Ducky Chucky, Goosey Brucey, and Turkey Perky waddled and waddled and waddled until they could see the palace just beyond the farmer's field. As they waddled over the last hill of the vast field, they saw a flash of reddish brown before them. It was Mr. Fox. Not Pastor Fox, Mr. Fox. 
Mr. Fox then entices Henny Penny and Rooster Booster into his den where we can imagine nothing good is about to happen. Now we might see Mr. Fox as those false prophets and fake messiahs that Jesus warns us about. While the weekly news offers their so-called prophecies and predictions tongue-in-cheek, others have seriously tried and sometimes succeeded in drawing misguided believers into their lairs. Others have used the current headlines to spark fear into those who are familiar with the words of Jesus, but only up to the point where he says, do not be alarmed, the end is still to come. They would have us believe that judgment day is just around the corner. And perhaps it is. But following them is not the way to prepare. The way to prepare is the way of faith. Believing that whenever the end comes, it is the grace of God that makes us ready. There's nothing more we can do to prepare than to believe our Heavenly Father when He says, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. And to take heart in the promise of Jesus. This is my body and blood given for you for the forgiveness of sins. The false prophets, the calamities, both natural and man-made, are but the beginning of God's plan for rebirth and new life. We must never lose sight of the fact that there will be a time when the world of faith as we know it will be thrown down. We must maintain a sense of urgency, albeit a calm sense of urgency, concerning our faith. You know, when a woman finds out she's expecting a child, she doesn't wait till a week before delivery to start taking care of herself or the life growing within her. She begins preparing right away. As we've been in the beginnings of the birth pangs of God's new creation for some time now, that time when Jesus will come again to make all things new, we must be preparing as well. And as I said, the way to prepare is the way of faith. Whenever we talk about faith, especially as it pertains to preparing, and preparing for the eschaton especially, we often ask the question Paul asked in his letter to the Romans and what becomes of works. We turn to our Lutheran mantra of justification by grace through faith apart from works of the law. And we wonder if good works have any place at all in preparing for the new life God has in mind for his creation and for us, his creatures. Well, the answer, of course, is yes. Good works do have a place in the life of faith. It's just that sometimes we get the places of faith and works reversed. We're not saved by good works, but if we can truly appreciate the wonder of justification by grace through faith, good works will naturally be a part of our lives. And even though Jesus says the things he predicts must take place, he also says, do not be alarmed. Somehow it will all work out. It is all part of the divine plan. Faith to persevere in the face of calamity. Faith to resist the false prophets. Faith that leads to salvation by God's grace is a gift of the Holy Spirit. A priceless gift beyond compare. Given such a gift, how do we respond? Do we give God the best of all that we have? Or do we toss God the scraps and leftovers? Jesus says faith the size of a mustard seed can move mountains, and there's no way for us to measure someone's faith. But the works we do are a good indicator. So all the predictions of the weekly world news and others have yet to come true. Henny Penny was saved by her friends and realized that she had panicked for nothing. The headlines are filled with signs and portents described in both the Old and the New Testaments. Do not be alarmed. Be ready. Believe that God sent his Son so that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. And let your faith show in the way you live. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able. All my hope on God is founded, who will all my trust renew? 
who through change and chance will guide me, only good and only true. God unknown, God alone, call my heart to be thine own. Mortal pride and earthly glory, sword and crown betray our trust. What with care and toil we fashion, tower and temple fall to dust. By thy power, hour by hour, is my temple and my tower. Living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. God, our creator, you show us the path of life. Bless faithful people everywhere with humility as they extend compassion to those who have experienced harm in religious spaces. Cultivate healthy congregations that tell of and enact your reconciling love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our constant, you love our universe from beginning to end. As the seasons change, protect animals that migrate and hibernate. Bring them safely to a sheltered place and a more abundant season. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our ruler, you write your law on human minds and hearts. Give wisdom to all elected leaders and officials to govern with insight and compassion. Make them mindful of the well-being of all people so that your world will flourish. Guide, bless, and protect the members of our armed forces, law enforcement officers, and others who work for peace and justice. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our stronghold, you are present amid disaster. We pray for those affected by natural disasters. Come to the aid of all survivors of earthquakes, famines, floods, hurricanes and wildfires, and the first responders who support them. Calm their fear, supply their need, and be solid ground beneath their feet. Send your healing spirit to be with all who suffer in any way. Especially today, we remember Anita Flegel, Stephanie Carl, Emma Mink, and all others we now name aloud or in our hearts. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our guide, you are greater than we can imagine. Surround congregations with your expansive inclusion. Be present in the midst of disagreements, differences, and questions. Unite people of diverse viewpoints in the love of Christ. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our beginning and our end, your beloved people shine like the brightness of the sky. We thank you for the lives of all who rest in your eternal mercy, from famous saints to the people we have loved. Assure us of your resurrection promise. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our hope and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of peace.
I invite you to stand as you're able. Let us pray. Holy God, the earth is yours and everything in it that you have chosen to dwell among your creatures. Come among us now in these gifts of bread and wine and strengthen us to be your body for the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, you alone are holy, you alone are God. The universe declares your praise. Beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. We praise you, O God. Generations bless your faithfulness. Through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We bless you, O God. We give you thanks for your dear Son, at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. We thank you, O God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us, on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering, within this meal, among your people throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your spirit, in your church, without end. Amen. Let us pray together as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. A feast of love is offered here for you and for all the saints. procedure, uh, we ask you to come forward, uh, pick up a cup there, uh, the wine, come to the rail, please remain standing at the rail, I'll distribute the host, after you take the host and the wine, you may return to your seat.
I invite you to stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen us and keep us in His grace. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, at this table you have been for us both host and meal. Now send us forth to extend our tables and to share your gifts until that day when all feast together at your heavenly banquet. Amen. God, the beginning and the end, who has written your name in the book of life, bless and keep you in grace and peace from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. by the saints before us, go in peace to serve the Lord. We will. Thanks be to God. 